The world's biggest supplier of enzymes is working hard to come up with ways to reduce dependency on fossil fuels like the oil that's leaked into the Gulf of Mexico. Well, for more on this, we're joined by the company's president and CEO, Steen Riesgaard. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and speak to us. So Thanks tell for me, having me. Yeah, of course. So tell me about your progress in these efforts. Uh, on the, on the uh, second gen uh, uh, biofuel, uh, uh, we are uh, ready for deployment. Uh, in the US, uh, some of our partners there uh, mm -hmm. are ready to build factories. Uh, the most advanced is, uh, is by Poet, the biggest producer of uh, fuel eth uh, ethanol today. They will start building late this year and have a, a, a big factory up and running in a year's time. Uh, it'll be a 100 million liter facility. In uh, China, uh, our partners uh, Sinopec and Kofco will be um, uh, building a, a, a demonstration unit uh, starting next year, uh, a big demonstration unit. In uh, Brazil, people are ready also with demonstration units. So uh, cellulosic uh, or second gen where we use agricultural waste as input mm. is being deployed as we speak. So will Novozyme make more deals such as one we saw in December of 2008 with Sanofi Aventis? Do you have anything exciting in the pipeline? Uh, we always have exciting <laughs> things in the pipeline. Uh, we, uh, we, we do uh, uh, smaller and bigger deals all the time. The latest one actually is the uh, agreement we made with uh, Didini in uh, Brazil. Uh, that's a big engineering company that is uh, specializing in making uh, sugar mills and, and the deal is uh, to help them uh, engineer uh, second gen uh, facilities where the input will be uh, bagasse the waste from the sugar uh, production. Tell me, what are the, the obstacles that you face in, in sort of boosting support? Or how much demand are you seeing really for green technology? I know that you know, we've been hearing a great deal about the effects of climate change and of course you know, world leaders have been you know, talking about tackling these issues. But at the end of the day, you know, given the extent of dependence on fossil fuels, what, what are the challenges for a company like yours? Yeah, uh, I, I think uh, after the uh, kind of part failure of COP15 in Copenhagen, uh, a lot of the hype of course has gone uh, and now uh, people are more realistic uh, but uh, when they are realistic they still realize that they can uh, it's good business uh, to uh, work with us to, to use uh, biotech methods uh, and, uh, and, and when they do uh, invariably uh, it will also help the climate so it's just that uh, very often these measures uh, that help the climate are also good business uh, but now it's only driven by good business all right, well, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate your time, Steen Rizgard.